no specific food, not even sugar, causes cavities. Strep mutans is not something you're born with. It's actually a communicable bacteria. It turns out that baking soda and water is actually a pretty good toothpaste if you're not going to go buy a toothpaste. Let's talk about how cavities form. As I mentioned before, cavities are literally holes. They're fenestrations, as the uh, nerds call them, nerds like me. If they make it down to the dentin layer of the tooth, most likely do need to be drilled and filled and presumably billed. All of our goal is to try and keep our teeth in a state of remineralization by keeping the pH, that is the relative acid alkaline balance of the mouth, such that the saliva supports remineralization. No specific food, not even sugar, causes cavities. Cavities are caused by bacteria that feed on sugar, that then produce acid that burrows down through, that degrades, that demineralizes the tooth in this very focal area that we call a cavity. The bacteria, while there are several of them, the major one is called Streptococcus mutans, or what I'll call Strep mutans for short. Strep mutans is not something you're born with. It's actually a communicable bacteria. That's right, you give it to one another. Most people in the world have strep mutans or will get strep mutans and it lives in the mouth. When there's sugar present, it eats it, produces acid, the acid produces cavities. Taking teeth from a state of remineralization to demineralization, if your mouth is already in a state that's more demineralization mode, it will capitalize on that and it will cause cavities much faster. Keep in mind that Acidity is bad for the mouth. Does that mean that you should never consume a lemon or drinking water with lemon in it or carbonated drinks or anything that has acidic flavor? No. Does that mean that if you were to have a zero carbohydrate diet, no sugars, no starches, etc., you would reduce the opportunity for strep mutans to consume sugar and release acid? Maybe. However, most people won't do that. And Strep mutans is a very clever, maybe even diabolical bacteria. And if you are on a zero carbohydrate, zero sugar diet, there's some evidence that strep mutans will figure out ways to feed on other components. The key is to try and reduce the amount of strep mutans and reduce the amount of acid in the mouth. Those minerals that form the crystals within the enamel and some of the deeper layers of your tooth, those crystals form through a specific type of bond. And those bonds are very strong. They're not indestructible, but they're tough to pull apart. And the naturally occurring mineral that's responsible for the majority of these bonds in the enamel and teeth is called hydroxyapatite. Fluoride is a substance that is not a vitamin, it's not a mineral, it is not an essential nutrient, but can actually replace some of the hydroxyapatite bonds in teeth and actually make those bonds hyper strong, super physiologically strong. When we say alcohol is not good for oral health and for tooth health, what we're talking about is the disruption that alcohol creates to the microbiome and the way that it alters the pH of your saliva and places the mouth and the teeth into a demineralization state. The second thing on the not good for us list for sake of oral health are stimulants like Adderall, Vyvanse, et cetera. Basically any drug that increases epinephrine and norepinephrine, adrenaline and noradrenaline, there are the other names for those, are going to have a negative effect on oral health. Why would stimulants cause such disruption in oral health? Well, there are really two reasons. There's a chemical reason and there's a mechanical reason. The chemical reason is that stimulants change the pH of your saliva, making the mouth more acidic, which makes strep mutans and other bacteria more capable of creating cavities down into the teeth. They take your mouth and your teeth from that remineralization state to that demineralization, demon mode. Demon mode, that's a way to remember it's bad, demon mode. Stimulants encourage mouth breathing. Watch a meth addict or watch somebody who's on a high dose of stimulants and they tend to mouth breathe because of the shifts in autonomic nervous system function, they tend to be mouth breathers. So it's the drying of the mouth that also shifts the mouth from that remineralization mode to demineralization mode. As long as you're not speaking, as long as you're not eating, try and breathe through your nose. If you're exercising and exercising really hard, like you're running really hard, fine, mouth breathe. Smoking, cigarettes, and yes, also cannabis. And yes, vaping does this too. It's so funny, anytime I talk about smoking being bad, people are like, well, what about cannabis? Then people ask, well, what about vaping? Vaping's not as bad as smoking, right? That's what they say. And the truth is that vaping is terrible for your oral health as well. Is it as bad as smoking? Probably not, but it's bad for a bunch of other reasons. After you eat anything, it's a good idea to try and clear as much of that food product from your mouth. And no one's telling you not to eat acidic foods. It's about limiting the amount of time that the overall milieu of the mouth is acidic 
having a stretch of time of maybe two, four, six hours or more where you're not eating anything or ingesting anything that's acidic in terms of liquids can be very beneficial. This is a vote in support of so-called intermittent fasting. This is something that I practice. We have an amazing opportunity during the day, especially in the morning and throughout the day, to create a lot of saliva that's the right pH to support remineralization of the teeth, provided that there isn't a lot of food or acidic liquids in the mouth at that time. So at least to my mind, this is an interesting opportunity to place intermittent fasting, which again, or even just gaps between meals not constantly snacking or sipping on acidic beverages throughout the day as an opportunity to create that healthy milieu during which the teeth can remineralize and the overall oral health can improve. The vast majority of dentists out there all say the same thing. You need to brush, you need to floss, you need to do it twice a day or more, and you need to do it correctly. Use a soft, toothbrush. Very vigorous brushing with medium or hard bristles really disrupts the interface between the teeth and the gums in ways that's not healthy for the gums and actually makes tenting of the gums and those pockets, those recesses as they're called, far more likely to form. If you are regular with your brushing and especially if you're brushing and flossing regularly, that a soft toothbrush is going to be the best way to break up that biofilm layer each and every time and promote the best tooth and overall oral health. Likewise, if you use an electric toothbrush, it was recommended that you not provide too much pressure, that you really try and keep the tips of the bristles on the, the teeth and gums. And yes, it was also suggested that people brush their gums. This is interesting. For people out there who have tooth sensitivity, one of the major suggestions from people in the dental and periodontal field was to actually brush your gums lightly to increase circulation of blood and other nutrients to the deeper portions of the tooth that actually extend into the bone. You need to floss correctly. You can't just pull the floss down onto the gum in between the tooth. You need to glide down the side of the tooth, get a little bit underneath the gum and use a circular motion and then lift up from between the two teeth. Almost all of them, except for one, felt that flossing is a great idea for tooth health and that if your gums bleed when you floss correctly, as I just described what correct flossing is, that your best strategy is to floss at least twice a day between all of your teeth. Xylitol is a very low calorie sweetener. I can place it among the other low calorie sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, stevia, etc. But what's unique about xylitol is that very much like standard sugar or any kind of carbohydrate sugar, the bacteria Streptococcus mutans loves to eat xylitol. But when Streptococcus mutans eats xylitol, it cannot produce the acid that normally would demineralize the teeth and create cavities. In addition to that, when Streptococcus mutans eats xylitol, it kills Streptococcus mutans. So what this means is that if xylitol is present in the oral cavity after a meal, say in the minutes and hours after a meal, then any strep mutans that happens to be there is going to preferentially feed on the xylitol, not other sugars, and it won't be able to release acid. And because xylitol can actually inhibit the growth and that is the proliferation of more strep mutans. We've got a twofer. We've got a situation where strep mutans can't release acid to demineralize the teeth and potentially cause cavities. And the total amount of strep mutans that can grow, that can proliferate in what are called colonies. Literally, the bacteria colonizes on the teeth in that forming that biofilm. Well, then that can't happen. If you are looking for the best toothpaste xylitol based, check out the link in the description. Most all mouthwashes, especially those containing alcohol, are terrible for oral health. Simply put, they deplete certain components of the mucosal lining of the mouth and they disrupt the healthy components of the oral microbiome. In addition, there are antiseptic mouthwashes, some of which contain alcohol, some of which don't. Most people, however, are using mouthwashes to freshen their breath and to kill off additional bacteria in the mouth that they might believe they couldn't get with brushing or flossing. If you are somebody who really wants to use a mouthwash for that reason, I encourage you to try and find a mouthwash that is not alcohol-based and that is not a strong antiseptic, or that if it is an antiseptic, that it's not alcohol-based. I talked to several dentists and they told me that baking soda actually is fairly low on the abrasiveness rating scale. It's actually considered quite safe for the enamel of the teeth, especially if you're brushing with a soft toothbrush and you're not like really grinding the stuff against your teeth. So it turns out that baking soda and water is actually a pretty good 
toothpaste if you're not going to go buy a toothpaste. It's pretty clear that hydrogen peroxide, unless there's a specific medical recommendation to do so, is not something you want to introduce to the oral cavity. Hydrogen peroxide is just far too abrasive for the mouth cavity. It does seem that creating a high salt solution Okay, so taking some salt, putting it into water, dissolving it, and then finding the point at which it won't quite dissolve because the concentration of sodium is just high enough. And using that as, of course, not something to swallow, but rather as a dental rinse. So putting your mouth and swishing it around and then spitting it out and it's gonna taste very salty. And then taking a swig of water, you know, just plain water and then swishing it around and then spitting it out. That actually provides a really nice milieu for the production of healthy mouth bacteria. But again, I wanna be very clear, do not, do not swallow high salt concentration fluid. We're talking about a swish and then a spitting it out every six months. That's the general recommendation. This business of going to the dentist twice a year makes sense from the perspective of quote unquote routine cleanings. But everyone acknowledged that those routine cleanings, while they can remove tartar that's built up, that would be very, very difficult for people to reverse or eliminate at home. And while they can identify cavities and tell you how far a cavity has developed into the tooth, etc., every one of those dentists agreed that those routine cleanings are not actually going to help remineralize your teeth, except to the extent that they remove existing bacteria, plaque, and tartar. And so all of them said that they wish for and that they really strive in their own practices to promote more oral health daily protocols of the sort that we've talked about today, which I think is just great.